Hello and welcome everybody. In this video we will discuss section 1.1 in the book which is about random number generation and in particular we will discuss Yudo random number generators which are the tool which is used to produce random numbers on a computer. In the book I define a pseudo random number generator to be an algorithm which outputs a sequence of numbers which can be used as a replacement for an IID sequence of random numbers. And IID stands for independent and identically distributed and the reason that we are aiming for this is that that is what we use for the samples of Monte Carlo estimates. So the whole purpose of this chapter is to explain how we can generate sequences of random numbers, which we will then use in chapter 3 as a building block for Monte Carlo methods. I want to go through this definition bit by bit. So first thing it says down here, this, the output can be used as a replacement for random numbers. And to go with this, we are talking about pseudo-random numbers. So pseudo means it's not quite the real thing. And the reason we are not using real random numbers is that these are really hard and expensive to generate. True random numbers, they cannot directly be generated with a computer. You need some special hardware for that. And again, that is expensive and complicated and messy business. So we use pseudo random numbers to replace true random numbers just because it's more practical. And in particular for Monte Carlo estimates, we need millions of them. So it's important that we can generate them quickly and without much effort. The second thing here, the keyword is an algorithm. That just means a step of instructions a computer can follow. So here we are really aiming for something a computer can do, which gives us something which is not actually random because computers can't do that, but which is at least nearly random and which we can use in place of true random numbers. Then the rest I think is clear. The output is a sequence of numbers, that's what we want. And these numbers can be used as a replacement for IID random numbers and we will later in section 1.1.2 talk about what does it mean that we can use it as a replacement. I want to start by just giving you an idea of what I mean. So what a computer can do is following instructions. And so we need to write some instructions which give us numbers. And the common scheme which covers most random number generators, the ones we will discuss here and also others which we won't discuss, is that there is some state stored in the computer and the algorithm operates in steps. So Initially, the state is something I just call here as zero. And after the first step, the state changes into something I want to call S1 and then S2 and so on. And the idea is every time we need a random number, we do one of these steps. And then the random numbers are directly computed from the state. So there will be some function which gives the first random number from state one, the second random number from state two, the third random number from day three. We will talk about that in more detail. But the important thing is both kinds of arrows correspond to some numbers. So there's some number f which evolves the state. So we have the state is in some set s, which I haven't talked about yet. And there is this function which takes an old state, for example, a zero and gives us a new state. So that is a function which maps states into states. That is often called the mixing function. And then from the states, we will be able to obtain the output, the sequence of numbers we are promised by a pseudo random number generator. So there's a second function g which maps the state, whatever it is, into numbers. And I would call this the output function. And many pseudo random number generators have this structure. So the only one we will discuss in any amount of detail here is the linear concurrential generator that is in section 1.1.1 of the book. And let me just show you how this works. So I first write it how it's written in the book and then we see how we can bring that into the scheme from the previous slide. So here is a very simple rule. The numbers we generate are generated using the equation xn is given by a x n minus one plus c and the whole result modulo m. So modulo means you divide by m and the remainder that is what we get. And all of these are integers, so xn is in the set 0, 1, 
up to m minus 1. And that is good because the remainder when I divide by m that is in this range. So the rule I just wrote leaves us in this space. And then there are these numbers. So a is the number in the range from 1 to m minus 1. And that's called the multiplier. Then there is c, the thing I'm adding. That could be 0 in theory too. So that is in the range 0 up to n minus 1. And that's called the increment. And finally, we have this number m. That can be any natural number except 0. So I write m in the set of natural numbers, which is 1, 2, 3, and so on. And that is called the modulus. Now, if we have all of these numbers, we have a rule here which tells us how we compute the next x from the previous x. So if we look here, you see first there is no distinction between s and x in this algorithm. The linear concurrential generator just uses g, the identity, and s, the state space, would just be the set I wrote here. So that here would be the state space. And I just said there is no distinction between s and x. So we have g, the function which maps states into outputs, g of s would just be s. So s and x is the same. And then f is the function which maps a state into the next state. So that is the rule I just wrote. So f of x or f of s, doesn't matter what you write, is ax plus c mod m. So what I wrote here fits beautifully in this general framework. There is one thing I have not yet spoken about, namely this S0 is never computed. All the other quantities here are computed, so S1 we can know if we know S0, S2 we can know if we know S1, and correspondingly X1 we can know if we know S1, and X2 we can know if we know S2. So the only thing which is not explained in this plot is S0, and the reason is you get to choose this, so that thing is called the seed and we will need to talk about this later. And that also occurs in the linear concurrential generator, namely here this rule computes each x from the previous one, so we will need x0 to get started. So here x0 in s will be the seed. So this concludes the first part of our video, and in the next part we will use an example to illustrate how the LCG actually works in practice.